So next, I would like to welcome Dr. Diane Wagner, who will be delivering opening remarks. Dr. Wagner is our Interim Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education in the College of Human Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Wagner. Thank you very much, Dr. Phillips. Dear faculty and staff colleagues and wonderful new gold humanism honorees, um, I'm so thankful to you all for making this event possible and it is an honor to open this ceremony. This is a challenging time to talk about humanism, about being a human being. Human beings are complex and they behave in complicated ways. Most of us enact a mixture of our best selves, our stressed selves, and sometimes even our truly disappointing selves. We are witnessing at this moment in the life of our nation, the effects of a global pandemic and the effects of centuries of ongoing terrible wrongdoing against our fellow man. We rage against a virus that is nothing more than chemistry, but it is much worse and more difficult to determine how to mount our efforts against our own inhumanity. Dr. Martin Luther King spoke the following words, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. This phrase has been interpreted differently over the years, but for me, it is a very powerful visual message, the meaning of which I'll try to share with you. When I think about that phrase, I see a shining length of metal glinting in the sun. It stretches from one horizon to the other, far beyond where one could possibly see, the, see either its fixed beginning or its untethered end. It's a flexible scabbard and it can be tipped upwards or it can be weighted down. It can point upward to justice and humanity or it can point downward in the direction of those opposites. I think of people living their lives, making choices, exercising their wills, and that each time someone does that, the arc bends toward betterment of our world or in the other direction. In my version of this vision, it takes effort to tip the arc upward towards justice, towards betterment, towards humanism. It is easier to bring it down, weighted by often simpler actions or less complicated choices. And so the battle for betterment is waged and the point of the arc changes in space and time. Every one of tonight's honorees was chosen by their peers to be given this very special recognition, the Gold Humanism Award. Every one of you has put your energy into and has set your intention to be a part of tipping that heavy arc of metal upward, pointing it towards the betterment of patients' experiences, patients' lives, colleagues' experiences. And by doing so, you have made a difference for everyone in healthcare. You have helped to point the arc upward. It's work, hard but critical difficult but literally elevating and bettering the universe. You can't see the change in that arc, but you have made a difference. You have added the strength of your actions and your convictions to that long arc, helping it arch upwards with the very strength of your humanity. You should feel wonderful about this award, and I speak for all of the faculty and staff of the college when I say that we could not be prouder of each and every one of you. Keep pushing, keep aiming upwards. It makes a difference. In fact, it makes all the difference. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Wagner. Next, 
we have a video um, from the Gold Humanism Honor Society that they asked us to share uh, during this celebration. Um, one of the things that is nice about Zoom and doing things remotely by, uh, you know, sort of against our choice is that um, we've been able to incorporate more presence from the national organization into our ceremony. Um, so we'd like to begin by sharing a, a video from the foundation and then we have a speaker from the Gold Humanism Honor Society Foundation to speak with us today. A little while ago, I had a patient whose name was Andrew. And I was showing a young pre-med student around. And I said, Andrew, you have a young future doctor in front of you. What do you want to tell her? And he said, listen to your patient. Touch your patient. We're more than the results in the computer. We're more than what the monitor reads. I was having a very difficult pregnancy and was on bed rest for a number of months. I was finally able to have another exam in the doctor's office. And when he did the exam, he checked for the baby's heartbeat, and there was none. And he turned to me and said, I don't hear a heartbeat. I think the baby's dead. I'll see you tomorrow morning in the hospital. It's so cold. No connection, no understanding. That was 40 years ago, and it still hurts. You can be an incredibly smart and brilliant physician, but if you can't relate to people, you have failed in your duty to be the very best physician you can be. At first, being a scientific person and being very evidence-based, I didn't really think that compassion helped outcome. I thought, well, compassion's nice, but does it really make a difference? And I've witnessed how it makes a difference, and so that's really changed the way I want to practice care. The Gold Humanism Honor Society was created to recognize exemplars of the kind of doctoring that we all want for ourselves. You wear a pretty dress. Where did you get this dress? What the Gold Humanism Honor Society does, it recognizes excellent students and faculty that have those characteristics of humanism. Why? Because we want every single student to realize that's a goal that you must try to achieve. Good to see you this morning. It makes a stand and says, this is an important part of our medical curriculum. You have to listen to and learn from your patients. I have been a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society for a year now and was elected by my classmates, which I think was probably the greatest honor of medical school. After becoming a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society, I became exposed to mentors and national leaders in medicine that make humanistic medicine a frontline treatment in patient care. It's not just one day I got this award and that's it, and I'll just look back on it and say thanks, but it's a constant reminder for the future. Well, it's nice to talk with you. Of how I want to be as a physician. Okay, I understand, I understand. The society serves as a model of what we're striving for that you want to be the very best doctor you can be and at the same time have this humanistic approach to interacting with patients. That's what the Honor Society is about.
Thank you. Next, um, with that, I would like to introduce Ann Bruder. Uh, Ann Bruder is a representative of the national organization. She is the Associate Vice President for Programs at the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. We very much appreciate her coming to be with us this evening. Welcome, Ms. Bruder. So hello to all, greetings from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. Uh, as Dr. Phillips said, I'm Ann Bruder, Associate Vice President of Programs at the Gold Foundation. And I'm very happy to be with you here today at your induction into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. And uh, thank you for all the, the great words so far and I'm looking forward to, to the rest of them. They were really beautiful, powerful and, and wise comments. Uh, I wish we could be together in person. I'm sure you're all feeling that way, but I think we're all getting rather used to these virtual gatherings. And they really do help to provide a sense of community in the midst of these uh, strange times we find ourselves in. The COVID-19 pandemic and this powerful movement to end racial injustice really provides all of us, uh, I think, an opportunity to demonstrate our compassion and humanity. As GHHS inductees, I'm sure you're all rising to meet the immense and very critical needs of this moment with incredible courage, care, and, and humanism. So from all of us at the Gold Foundation community around the world, thank you. Today is a special day, I think, for all of you, a touch point in your lifelong journey as leaders in humanism and healthcare. You've shown that you understand how critical it is to be human yourself in your role as a healthcare provider, to listen carefully, to show respect, to care with compassion. Uh, MSU has a long tradition of supporting humanism in medicine, demonstrated by activities you likely all know well, the, uh, your GHHS chapters, annual humanism in medicine conference, presentations at the Gold Foundation's Humanism Summit, and participation in national GHHS initiatives such as Thank Residence Day. The Gold Foundation created the Gold Humanism Honor Society in 2002, as you saw in the, in the video preceding this, really to reinforce the best of medicine, honoring and supporting future physicians who are not only skilled in the science of medicine, but also in building caring, trusting, and collaborative relationships with, with families and, and patients and coworkers. Uh, true health care really depends on this human connection. Today, there are more than 165 Honor Society chapters and 35,000 members all over the world. They're your fellow champions of humanism. Look for them and for others who have this same passion for compassionate care. They'll be your allies. You really are an important part of the mission of humanism and healthcare, and we thank you for that. Please stay in touch with us and, and let us know how we can help you to continue your work in furthering this mission. On behalf of the Gold Foundation, congratulations on your selection into the Gold Humanism Honor Society, and uh, best wishes on your journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Huber. Next, um, we will begin with our faculty inductees. Um, our students choose two faculty every year to be inducted into the Global Humanism Honor Society. And uh, this is a, a particularly special honor because um, we can only induct two and we have hundreds and hundreds of faculty across our college and every year it is it is a difficult choice um, but i'm really pleased with the two faculty who were chosen this year they really both exemplify the spirit of the gold foundation and humanism and medicine so i will begin with introducing our first faculty inductee dr laura caravalla dr caravalla is a graduate of the college of human medicine um, she serves as the director of the Medical Partners in Public Health Certificate Program. She's also an associate professor in both the Department of Pediatrics and the Department of Internal Medicine in the College of Human Medicine. She has really been active in medical education and public health throughout her entire career um, at the college, uh, both in graduate and undergraduate medical education. And she's received many awards for teaching, both student teaching and resident teaching. 
And the comments from the students really um, talked a lot about the quality of her teaching. They mentioned that she is really good at creating a holistic and inclusive environment in the classroom, uh, in bringing out diverse opinions and different people's opinions in the classroom. She often brings community members into the classroom so that uh, students get to engage directly with people who are working in the community. Um, and she herself is very active in, in, the, in her community. And she's a role model for students. Um, students find her very inspiring and uh, truly enjoy working with her and also said that she challenges them and helps them learn and grow. When I asked Dr. Caravella what I should say about her, she said, tell them that I love to mentor medical trainees. It is my privilege to watch them become who they want to be and to watch them learn and grow. So we're very pleased to have Dr. Caravalla speak with us today, um, and we have invited her to share some reflections with us. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, sorry that I can't be there with you in person, and I'm giving you an elbow hug right now. Um, thank you so much uh, to the students and other members of the group for nominating me to the Gold Humanism Honor Society. And congratulations to my fellow nominees. I've been fortunate to work with many of the students uh, that are on our program tonight, and I was particularly pleased to be inducted at the same time as Dr. Paganini, who I've been lucky to work with as a team fellow in our Dewey One groups uh, this past year. Considering the society's values of integrity, excellence, compassion, altruism, respect, and empathy, I consider this the most important honor of my career, as I've always held these paramount. I wanted to share just a little bit of my journey with you. Um, I originally pursued medicine in part as a response to my upbringing, in which there was a lot of substance abuse uh, and other issues with many of the difficulties that can come with that. I saw our family physician as one of the few people that would be able to get access to my family members and have the opportunity and authority to help address some of these issues. I've always resonated with people who've had social difficulties of these sorts, and the population of Flint really called to me uh, during medical school, and so I was able to um, get an outstanding medical education there, and I learned all about the, way, the latest ways to diagnose and to treat acute diseases. But for chronic illness, which comprises the biggest disease burden for our patients, we were much less successful. I've tried to treat every patient with respect, compassion, and empathy, but sometimes I've come, sh come up short. At times I felt challenged by patients and I couldn't figure out why I could educate people upside down and sideways around their disease, and yet still they did not change their behavior and get better. Fortunately, I had the juxtaposition of the rather maternalistic pediatric culture uh, on top of the more kind of personal responsibility culture that often we see in internal medicine. And this, I think, helped me to kind of not give up on them, to keep digging and try to find reasons for their health behaviors and see what could be done to better influence them to take care of themselves. And this is the point where I discovered the social determinants of health. Imagine my dismay as a lifelong teacher to realize that education was necessary but not sufficient to gain ground on chronic disease. I was both surprised and also not surprised in view of my own background. I recently read a quote by Maya Angelou, do the best you can until you know better, then when you know better, do better. Since that time, I tried to better educate myself on the effects of education, income, environment, and social capital on the health of my patients and have advocated at the community and policymaking levels to find ways to reduce the disparities in disease that have been caused by these problems, and to help put our patients back into their own context and help to change the context to benefit their health. I've also learned that this kind of change usually only happens in the long haul, and usually only in teams with a full participation and partnership of all the stakeholders. This is important to remember in our current times with such monumental challenges and also changes taking place. I know that for me, it would be difficult to pinpoint one bit of change for which I've been responsible. But I also know that I have participated in many teams and have had amazing successes. 
It's been important to me to both take myself out of these endeavors, to remember it's not about me, it's about the patients singularly and in, in, in community, but also to make sure that I keep my own humanity central in whatever I attempt. I've spent my entire career in medical education, in clinical practice, and now in the remarriage of medicine and public health. It's been almost a guilty pleasure to be able to be part of the education and mentoring of students and residents. It's been my privilege to be able to share what I've learned and also to continue to learn with and from my students and from my patients, especially around these issues which are central to medical care. I hope I'll get to do this until the end of my professional life and I hope I get to do it with you and thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Caravella. Our next faculty inductee is Dr. Anthony Paganini. Dr. Paganini is an associate professor of physiology and biomedical engineering and serves as the director of integration in, and innovation at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine. Um, we don't very often induct basic science faculty, but we don't have very many basic science faculty who are like Dr. Paganini. He really is unique and special, and we're very pleased to be able to welcome him to the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Um, his dedication to student learning is truly amazing, and we would certainly not be the college that we are and have the curriculum that we have without his contributions. Um, he has really broad expertise. As a generalist myself, I have great respect for generalists and for people who have a broad breadth of knowledge. Um, and his knowledge is both broad and deep um, in many different areas. And he has really lent his expertise to helping students understand the curriculum um, in many different ways. So he's very good at understanding the material himself, but he's also very good at translating it into different modalities to help them be able to learn. Um, I was trying to think of a metaphor for what Dr. Paganini is to our curriculum, and at first I thought, well, he's like the backbone of the curriculum because he's helped construct it and build it. Um, and then I thought, well, he's not just structural, though. He's actually kind of the brains of the curriculum because he's thought about all the different ways that the students can think about their learning and, and engage with the learning. And then I thought about how much um, the students wrote about how he cared about them individually and the way that he um, responds to them and tries to make sure that they are personally and individually getting what they need from the curriculum and how much he tries to like help them think about um, how they can do better and, and then I thought well maybe he's actually the heart of the curriculum because he's so passionate about learning and about his work and about helping the students and finally, the students all commented on how much Dr. Paganini made learning fun, um, which I feel like, you know, for learning basic science material is a, is a true feat. So we're very pleased to have him and to welcome him. And we would like to invite Dr. Paganini to share some reflections with us. <laughs> all right, looks like you can see everybody. Um, okay, very good. Well, wow, that was a heck of an introduction. Um, Dr. Phillips, I appreciate that. It's very humbling. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I, mean, I don't even know what to say about that. I, uh, I, I really appreciate everything you had to say there. And uh, it's uh, felt like you're stretching the truth a little bit, but I'll, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, I absolutely cannot have been here without uh, everybody else working with me and, and, uh, and uh, the students, you know, obviously make it, make it worth wild work, uh, make it worth everything I, I work for. So um, I have to admit, I'm a little bit out of my, uh, a little bit out of my water uh, with this group, uh, because as a basic scientist, uh, we, it's not like we spend a lot of time thinking about humanism <laughs> while you get a PhD. Um, and this actually forced me, uh, when I realized that I was uh, uh, selected, uh, nominated to be in this society, um, to really pause for a moment and and kind of stretch back and think about what humanism means to me so i prepared a little speech here um, i'm a little bit out of my element because i can't stand up and i don't have a whiteboard so i apologize 
Uh, but uh, I'll try to imagine myself doing that. So first of all, here we go. So, greetings students, uh, Learning Society colleague, Dr. Caravella. Again, wonderful uh, to be co doctor with you, uh, Dr. Caravella, uh, my partner in crime. We tend to finish one another's sentences um, in Dewey One, and I've always enjoyed working with you, and I look forward to working with you again. Uh, senior Associate uh, Dean Wagner and Dean Sousa. I must say this induction into the Gold Humanism and Honor Society really caught me completely by surprise as I was under the impression that it was for medical students or practicing MDs. I never thought I'd qualify, uh, let alone be humbled by student nomination to join. First, I would not be in this position to accept this induction if it were not from the unwavering support, encouragement, wisdom, and humor of my beautiful wife and partner, Emma, who's by my side here. I also want to enthusiastically acknowledge the mentorship and friendship and keen ability to match my interests and abilities with the college needs that Dr. Wagner has adroitly provided. I also want to thank Dean Sousa for providing a lush biomedical educational ecosystem in which my colleagues and I can thrive in the spirit of the SDC to help grow, grow great day one residents. Because of these people and because of you, the students, I can honestly say I have never felt I've worked a day in my life since arriving full time at CHM. It continues to be a great ride. So thank you for this opportunity to share this experience with you. So here is, as a basic scientist, my view on this, since I don't have the privilege to work with patients and humanity in the way medical students do, and as you guys become future physicians. Um, so I, I guess I have a little different take on, on the viewpoint, which perhaps is why maybe you asked me to be here. So as someone who's been trained in engineering and then in biological sciences, I sheepishly admit that I did not fully understand all of the connotations of the word humanism. However, as a student of, of the history and the philosophy of science, my original understanding of humanism was that it was a transient period in, uh, of early Renaissance thought that revived, hey, <laughs> you knew this was coming, <laughs> that revived original Greek and Roman ways of thinking. And as a reaction to this, the age of empiricism, rationalism, and skepticism in the late Renaissance emerged, which ultimately gave us evidence-based medicine, evidence-based education that we now deploy in shared decision-making and in the SDC. However, here's the transition. However, as a shiny new medical school faculty member about 20 years ago, I came to understand what humanism meant in the College of Human Medicine. It is centered around serving the people with integrity, with compassion, with respect and humility, and importantly, with empathy. So it is this last quality, empathy, that I argue is the most fundamental and forms the basis upon which the other humanistic qualities derive their connotations. See, as a basic scientist, as a biologist, I always like seeing variability. But as an engineer, I want to see what is the fundamental principle of nature in, in terms of my training. So when I, look at, when I looked at the Gold Humanism, Society website, once I got nominated and elected this, because I had no idea that I was getting into the society, I was like, what is this about? And so I was looking at all the different qualities, and to me, I'm trying to think, all right, what's the endearing theme? What is the, the common denominator to all of these that can explain everything else? And if you didn't have it, you couldn't do these other things. So I meant, the video mentioned compassion. So I want to talk about empathy. That's the way I see it, at least. I want to unpack that a little bit more so you can appreciate my intellectual journey in becoming more self-aware and socially conscious. One way to view this, the ultimate first domino falling over cause of the protests, the boycotts, and other types of peaceful dis civil disobedience since the mid-1950s through the recent tragedy, tragedy of Mr. Floyd is that the ultimate cause, in the way I see it at least, is a profound lack of empathy by both individual and a lack of empathy by uh, systemic dysfunctional segments of society. I will even push this definition to its limit and proffer that evil, that evil equates to an inhuman complete lack of empathy for you to think about. Despite setbacks when social movements are sustained, despite setbacks, when social movements are sustained and become successful, they provide an opportunity for reasonable but, but too often silent people to mentally hit the pause button and process for a moment about what it must feel like in less fortunate person's shoes or a less fortunate person's job or part of town or family situation or medical situation. 
hopefully social activism can stop or at least slow down what I think of as an amygdala level reflex thinking pattern by some people who treat other people as, quote, the others. That's when we get into trouble. The video of the graphic tra tragedy of the last minutes of Mr. Floyd's life have acutely leveled up the current generation's activism. And think about this as a, as a historical thing, much in the same way that baby boomers were galvanized by Nick Oot's 1972 photograph of terrified Vietnamese children running from a napalm attack, or the 1970 John Philo photograph of a woman screaming over Jeff Miller's dead body shot by the Ohio National Guard at Kent State. Think about what that did for that generation. I would argue that Mr. Floyd and the other unfortunate souls that have been at the, at the wrong end of the law uh, serve as a similar type of galvanizing videography. And so it is with a small grin, of, small grin of cautious optimism that Colin Kaepernick may, might be feeling. We are currently witnessing the effect of the progressive river of thought and action have on the boulders of enmity. New legislative proposals at the local and federal level, sympathetic protests in other countries, statues tumbling in the Confederacy, London and Antwerp, the NFL commissioner's mea culpa, and even Webster's American Dictionary now committing to include the word systemic in the definition of racism. It's no longer just prejudice, it's systemic prejudice. I would like to think, I sincerely hope, that we are actually beginning to move the needle of empathy. So many times it is felt that change will not come soon enough. People tune out, or worse, they do not vote, and they either remain in their cocoon of indifference or their snuggie of privilege. But besides these recent promising events, I, can see, uh, I see cause for optimism and eventual social change when we allow ourselves to view the long arc of the trajectory of the arrow of time, something similar to what Dr. Wagner was bringing up in her introductory speech. So consider this, when I talk about the river of social activism against the boulders of enmity. The liberties and protections of habeas corpus first proffered in the Magna Carta, the self-evident principle, although not fully practiced just yet, that all people are created equal, freedoms of speech, separation of church and state, right to bear arms, freedoms of unreasonable search, Speedy trials by jury, I'm, I'm gonna keep going here, abolishing uh, abolition of slavery, due process, women's suffrage, child labor laws, 40 hour work week, Geneva Convention, family medical leave, food safety law, labor safety law, minimum wage, American Disability Act, I'm gonna keep going, I will, American or animal, animal welfare, social security, Medicare, Head Start, environmental regulations, every single one of these has eventually come to pass, but only, only after sustained and vigorous social and political activism and, po and people getting out to vote. They are all at their core founded ultimately on the identification with, sympathy with, and awareness of fellow less fortunate beings, be they humans or animals. Almost done, guys. And for me, personally, when I look at the iconic Earthrise photo taken in 1968 by Apollo 8 astronauts, it puts it all in perspective, that we are all in this together, we must strive to have empathy for one another, regardless of what side of the body of water we are on or landmass we are on. And here's something, putting a little basic science spin on it for you because you guys invited me. Especially regardless of what of the rate at which melanin pigment is degraded in the melanosomes of keratin sites, which determines skin color. Yes, that's what determines skin color, the rate at which melanin pigment is degraded in the melanosomes. So just think about that for a moment, future medical students future physicians, pardon me. Just think about that for a moment. The profound lack of empathy that some people show toward one another is simply based upon the KM and Vmax of an enzyme determined by the evolutionary means of natural selection due to latitude and thus ultraviolet radiation. When you think about it like a scientist would, it's absolutely preposterous and frankly inhuman given the surface area of our cerebral cortex. We are better than this. So listen with the ears of another, see with the eyes of another, think with the mind of another, feel with the heart of another. Start with empathy as your first principle and the rest will follow. It's not that complicated. When viewed from the loneliness of cold space, we all have a shared destiny. And on the small blue marble spinning in a remote outpost of the Milky Way, this is our shared discovery. And that is what humanism is to me. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Dr. Paganini, and thank you, Dr. Caravella. That was uh, wonderful. It was really good to hear from both of you. Um, and we're so pleased to have you join us as members of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Okay, so we're coming to my favorite part of the program, which is when we get to induct the students into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Um, I want to say just a little bit about the student selection process because I think it's really important and really unique. Um, students are nominated for Gold Humanism Honor Society by their peers. Uh, by other medical students. And the nomination process is longitudinal. Um, they're nominated over time. And we look at their nominations through their uh, first year of medical school through their third year of medical school. Um, and they're nominated for different reasons, but, but like fundamentally, it's, it's really about their compassion and care. Um, sometimes it's about their compassion for their classmates and the way they take care of their classmates and each other. Sometimes it's about their compassion for patients, um, the way that they're role models for other students or the way they really go above and beyond to make sure their patients have what they need or they take a particularly holistic approach to patients or they show maturity beyond their years and the way they take care of their patients. And sometimes it's broader than that. Sometimes it's national or international advocacy. Sometimes it's community engagement or community outreach. And many times it's all of those things. You know, students who are good at those things tend to be good at, 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 uh, at them in many ways and to wear their passion on their sleeve and to work hard um, to try to improve not just the patient's life at the bedside that they're with, but also their friend's life and their classmate's life and to improve all of um, all of societies. And the College of Human Medicine, we, um, we really value humanism and medicine in general. Um, I am uh, um, very lucky to sit on the admissions committee and we think about um, humanism and commitment to um, a commitment to service when we admit students to the medical school as a whole and I feel like it's something you know our motto is serving the people like it's something that we wear on our sleeve and we work really hard at and we try to recognize and do um, individually but also as a community so to be selected as someone who is especially good at that who is in the top 15 percent of the class and demonstrating those humanistic characteristics is really a true honor and the students who were chosen they didn't try out for this we never review their CVs we never review anything on paper about them. It is really about nominations of their peers. Um, and, and then there's a committee, which includes um, a large number of students that, that makes the final decisions. So um, with that, I would like to begin uh, recognizing our students. And the way the process will work this evening, um, we will recognize each student and then some of the students have decided they would like to share reflections also and that will come later in the program. I know one of the things that's hard about Zoom is that we don't get to applaud each individual student. There's not really an easy way to do that, but we are going to have some time for applause later. So just hold your applause. So I would like to start with um, Gafram Akram, our first medical student. Gafram is a student in the Southeast Michigan campus, and his peers spoke particularly about the extensive time that he has spent volunteering in the community. Um, he is on the board of directors of the Huda Clinic, which is a free clinic in Detroit, and has also arranged and organized for ways to uh, for other medical students to volunteer at that clinic. So he's volunteered personally, but he's also um, kind of forged a connection between MSU CHM and that free clinic. Congratulations, Gufran, on your induction. Our next student is Sarna Becker. Sarna is one of our Grand Rapids students. Um, Sarna was particularly recognized for her uh, positive attitude and the way that she cares for others, uh, both caring for her classmates and taking care of patients. Um, one student wrote that, I hope that when I have a family, I live somewhere near Sarna so she can be my family doctor. She would just be an incredible physician and I would love to have her take care of me and the people I love the most. Congratulations, Sarna. Our next student is Andrew Dang. Andrew is a student on the Lansing campus. Andrew is a very kind, compassionate, and thoughtful student. 
He works very hard to put patients' well-being at the center of his care, and he's very passionate about ensuring that patients are as healthy as they can be. In particular, he thinks a lot about their mental health, and he takes a holistic approach to care. Congratulations, Andrew. Our next student is Gabriela de Oliveira. Um, Gabriela is a student on our Midland campus. She is very active in volunteerism in the community, and in particular, she's volunteered with the Red Door Project, which is a, um, an organization that promotes racial reconciliation through the arts. Congratulations, Gabriela. Our next student is Larissa Fomumugri. Larissa is a student on the Flint campus. She also has um, volunteered extensively in the community, and she's also been very active in medical school in the Student National Medical Association. Congratulations, Larissa. Our next student is Mauricio Franco. Mauricio is a student on the Lansing campus. Mauricio is very committed to promoting diversity and inclusion within the College of Human Medicine community. In particular, he's advocated for the Latino community and for LGBTQIA uh, rights, um, both students and patients. Congratulations, Mauricio. Our next student is Emma Frost. Emma comes to us from the Flint community, and she is part of the Medical Partners in Public Health certificate program. Emma is very hardworking, very smart, and very compassionate. Uh, she's also been very active in the American Medical Association and in, in advocating for policy change to help patients. Congratulations, Emma. Our next student is Julio Garcia Castro. Julio is from the Grand Rapids community. Julio is very caring and compassionate and is a student that um, other students recognized in particular for his gentle demeanor with patients and his wonderful bedside manner. Congratulations, Julio. Our next student is Danielle Gibson. Danielle is from our Flint community and she's also part of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved Certificate Program. Danielle has um, volunteered extensively to help disadvantaged patients, both in the United States and internationally. Congratulations, Danielle. Our next student is Elise Huber. Elise is from the Traverse City campus. She is a member of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Community Health Program, which is a certificate program. Elise is recognized for being a great listener she is very caring about her patients, and she's also very dedicated to excellence as a physician and as a role model for her peers. Congratulations, Elise. Our next inductee is Joel Hunt. Joel is from the Upper Peninsula campus. He is part of the rural community, or sorry, he's part of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Physician Program. Joel works after hours as an emergency medical technician and also volunteers as an emergency medical provider uh, in his community. He also is a volunteer for the National Ski Patrol and students particularly recognize the number of uh, hours that he gave back to ensuring that his rural community is safe. Congratulations, Joel. Shane Jones is a student from the Flint community. He is also part of the Leadership in Medicine for the underserved curriculum. He has a strong interest in caring for underserved populations and he's volunteered extensively in the Flint community. Um, for example, he volunteered with a needle exchange program and he also taught a community health program on sexual health education. Congratulations, Shane. Our next student is Emanuela Joseph. Emanuela is part of the Grand Rapids community. She is very active in volunteering with children, particularly children from disadvantaged communities. Um, for example, she is a leader in the Reach Out to Youth program, which is a program for students from disadvantaged communities that teaches them about health careers. She played a key role in leadership of that program. Congratulations, Emanuela. 
Jackie Luthart is from our Upper Peninsula campus, and she is also part of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Physician Program. Jackie is very committed to caring for disadvantaged populations, particularly in rural Michigan. She also has mentored many pre-medical students at Michigan State University. Congratulations, Jackie. Anime Obo is from our Flint campus. Anime is very caring, non-judgmental, and concerned about her classmates, uh, goes out of her way to take care of them. She's also very active in community service, uh, as well as active in international health. Congratulations, Anime. Asase Obo is also from the Flint cam campus. Um, Asase has an exceptional commitment to diversity, both uh, promoting diversity at home and also um, caring for diverse populations uh, on the national level. Asase serves as the national president of the Student National Medical Association, which is a high honor for Michigan State University. Congratulations, Asase. Natalie Payne is a student in our Grand Rapids campus. Natalie has demonstrated exceptional commitment to community service in multiple ways. Um, for example, she has organized events for foster children in the Grand Rapids community. Congratulations, Natalie. Paulina Fongvosa is a student from Grand Rapids. She is also very caring and empathetic with patients and is a role model in that way. She also has been very active in advocacy for underrepresented minorities. Congratulations, Paulina. Sultan Quibwali is a student on our Southeast Michigan campus. He is also earning a master's of business administration while he is earning his MD degree. Sultan is an active volunteer in many community organizations, particularly focused on the care of disadvantaged populations. Congratulations, Sultan. Maria Rich is a student on our Grand Rapids community. Maria is very caring and dedicated in her approach to patient care. She also was described as someone who's willing to care for her classmates whenever they need help or support. She's someone that people can turn to. Congratulations, Maria. Doug Snow is a student from our Traverse City campus. He is also a participant in the Rural Community Health Program, the certificate program. Doug has an incredible commitment to rural health. Um, he has served as the leader of the Rural Health Interest Group, and he's very committed to helping students learn about how to better care for underserved populations. Congratulations, Doug. Karen Tate is a student from our Lansing campus. She has an incredible bedside manner and presence with patients. She's described as brilliant, caring, and very attentive to her patients. One student wrote, I always learn so much whenever I get to work with Karen. Congratulations, Karen. Sarah Teasing is a student in our Upper Peninsula campus. She is also part of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Physician Program, which is a certificate program. She served as a member of the Peace Corps before attending medical school, and she's very involved in several student organizations, uh, particularly those that are oriented towards social justice. She's also described as having a wonderful positive attitude and being a great encourager of other medical students. Congratulations, Sarah. Neha Tawani is a Lansing student. Lansing, um, sorry, uh, Neha <laughs> is described as a student who always thinks of others first. She takes time out for anyone who needs help. She's very caring toward other medical students. And she also is really particularly good at putting the patient first and keeping the patient at the center of care. Congratulations, Neha. Steve Trombley Jr. is from our Upper Peninsula campus. He's also part of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Physician Program. 
Steve is thoughtful, empathetic, and patient-centered. He is a wonderful listener and is described as someone who puts patients first. Congratulations, Steve. Amy Vandersip is part of our Flint community. She's also part of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved Certificate Program. Amy is very involved in service through CHM Serve and other organizations. She's very committed to helping others in her class, her patients, and the community. Congratulations, Amy. Shelby Walker is a student in our Midland campus. She is part of the Leadership in Rural Medicine Rural Community Health Program. Shelby is caring, selfless, and committed to excellence. She always has a positive attitude. Um, there was a student who had a medical emergency and told a story about how Shelby stayed with her and, and took care of her while she was waiting for her family to arrive. Congratulations, Shelby. Karen Wong is a student from our Flint community. She is part of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved Certificate Program. Karen has an incredible work ethic and a strong commitment to care of her patients. She's also described as having a brilliant fund of medical knowledge. She's a student that others view as a role model. Congratulations, Karen. Mulin Shiyong is a student in our Southeast Michigan community. Um, she is a strong advocate for diversity. Um, Mulin has organized events to support diversity within the college. She's also promoted student training around diversity in multiple ways. Um, and she's a role model for her peers in her commitment to patients. And I need to apologize because it looks like I've made an error in the program. So I'm gonna just make that correction. Um, it was about Gabriella. I don't know if we want to go back to Gabriella's slide for a moment. Um, it sounds like the thing I said about Gabriella was inaccurate. She did not volunteer for the Red Door Project. Um, she just wanted to make sure that we weren't misrepresenting her and she didn't misrepresent herself. Um, Gabriella, someone thinks that you volunteered for the Red Door Project because it was in your comments. That's why we said that. Um, in any case, um, Gabriella says that she volunteered for the Red Project in Grand Rapids, which is a needle exchange program. Um, in any case, Gabriella was recognized for her commitment to community service. So I just wanted to add that correction and thank you for letting us know. So the next thing we have in our program is the Golden Humanism Honor Society Oath. Um, we can go ahead and pull up the slide for the Gold Humanism Honor Society Oath. And I'm going to say just a little bit about this part of the program um, for everybody. So um, saying the oath, I, I feel is important. Um, it's, it's sort of a moment when you're inducted and you join us as a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Uh, it is probably going to be a little tricky by Zoom. <laughs> um, and I will just share my personal Zoom experience with saying things in unison is that um, there's a little bit of a time delay when people speak. So um, if you wait and listen to what everybody else is, is saying, you will like there will be a delay and we'll all get bogged down. Okay, so the thing to do is to just like push through it like everybody has to just keep talking and saying the oath you may only hear yourself and it's going to feel a little weird and it's not going to be in sync but we decided saying the oath was an important part of the program so we're going to try it and even if it's kind of a mess we're just going to go on forward um so everybody um if you're a gold humanism honor society member either a new inductee or an alum or a faculty member or um, you know the, the students from last year who were inducted, everybody go ahead and unmute yourselves. 
And you should be able to see my video right now. And there, I want my video to be up so that you can actually watch my face as I'm speaking. That'll help us stay together a little bit, I think. But you may want to pick me up and drag and drop me over to the left side of your screen just so you can see the oath itself. Okay, so I hear people are unmuting because we're getting that echo, but we're gonna dive right in and say the oath together, okay? Okay, <clears throat> go. I pledge, I pledge by all that I hold, that I hold dear, dear position, position. care for my patients, I will listen to my patients for my whole being, I will advocate to my patients for my whole being, advocate for each patient as a model, as a model and mentor, remember always, dedicate myself to others, remember always, Care. I dedicate oh, myself to care. 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 I will dedicate myself to joining with others to make care, care, care optimal for all. I will dedicate myself. Oh. <laughs> Yay, we did it. I told you it wouldn't be perfect, but you know, it seems important. So we did that. Good job, everybody. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is um, let some of the inductees share reflections, some of the students who've been inducted. So everyone, if you could mute yourself until your name is announced, that would be great. Um, and go ahead and stop your video also until your name is announced. Um, and I'm just going to call on each of you. You should be, um, if you, you should go ahead and unmute yourself and start your video. If you don't do that, we will prompt you to do so. So you'll get a little prompt on the screen telling you to go ahead and go forward. Okay. All right. So the first student who would like to share reflections is um, Larissa Fumamogri. Larissa, you may go ahead and share. Good evening, everyone. Um, first off, I'd like to thank my classmates that nominated me as I consider this to be the greatest honor of my medical career. I think my diverse background and path to medicine has allowed me to develop a great level of compassion and empathy for others and the ability to relate with others. Um, and I hope this is something I continue to practice with all my patients throughout my career. And one thing I think I have found true is the world is suffering today and I truly believe that if for everyone we meet, the first thing we've if the first thing we do is if we can find something in common with someone rather than notice our differences first, we can make the world a better place and hopefully provide more compassion for one another and make the world a better place one person at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Next, I would like to invite Mauricio Franco to share reflections with us. Hello everyone, what an honor to be recognized with such a, an amazing group of peers. I wanted to take a moment and acknowledge that the work I have done that is being recognized today is rooted in modeling the humanity and compassion I have seen from people like my husband, the women in my life, such as my mother, may she rest in peace, and the many queer leaders and leaders of color whose shoulders I stand on. I look forward to continuing on this lifelong endeavor with you all in uplifting health justice and fighting oppression. May we use our privileged platforms to challenge those in power, failing our communities and patients. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mauricio. Next, I would like to invite Danielle Gibson to share her reflections. Hi everyone, my name is Danielle Gibson and I'm just so grateful to become a member of the Gold Humanism Society. Um, when I was participating in community service or speaking up for individuals whose voices are sometimes not heard, I wasn't doing it for a reward or even a pat on the back. I was doing it because I wanna make sure that um, I can make society better and educate my colleagues on the disparities in minorities and underserved communities in hopes to um, give people the opportunity that they may not have been originally um, given. I'm thankful that my classmates have observed these behaviors and nominated me for this um, honor society. Thank you and I hope and pray that I continue to make a difference in the medical community and hopefully make sure everyone I come in contact with understands the reason why black lives really matter. Thank you so much, Danielle. Next, we would like to invite Karen Wong to share reflections. Hi, 
Um, so I just like to thank all my peers that voted for me. And I just want to say that it really is such a great honor to work besides people that are so compassionate and socially conscious um, and that they inspire me to do better every day. Thank you, Karen. Um, I just want to take a moment to ask my staff, are there any students who wanted to share that I haven't recognized? I think you're good, Julie. We are missing two of the students, but they have not joined yet. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. I know some of them were on call or uh, working. So um, next at this point in the program, we want to recognize our student leaders um, who've led the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Um, GHHS is kind of special because it's a, um, a medical student organization that is led by fourth year students, which is pretty unusual. Um, and in many ways, I consider them to be sort of the leaders and role models for the whole institution. And the work that they do really helps set the tone for the institution as a whole. Um, so we're very pleased uh, to recognize the students who've worked very hard this year, the fourth year students, um, and, uh, and then to welcome our incoming student leaders. So um, do we have the slide for the outgoing leaders? Yes, we do. Thank you, Joy. So I, I just want to take a moment to recognize these five leaders who served this year. Um, Jessica Montgomery, Katie Klammer, Amina Ramadan, Clementina Azamoa, and Alberto Tamayo. They all worked incredibly hard and did some really nice programming for us this year. So we thank you all and we appreciate the work that you've done. And we have one of our out outgoing student leaders here with us tonight. Um, Jessica Montgomery, who's our president, is going to share some words of wisdom with all of you. Hello all and congratulations to the new class of Gold Humanism inductees. You are all handpicked to be a member of this organization based on your commitment to humanism and healthcare. By taking that extra moment to talk with your patient, care for a classmate, or recognize the power you had to change the injustices through advocating for your patients, you have made a difference. I sincerely want to thank you all for all you have already done to better the world of medicine, and I cannot wait to see what you continue to do. During my family medicine clerkship, I was asked to interview a patient with suspected depression. Having just finished my psych rotation, I thought nothing of it, and approached the patient like usual, maybe throwing in a nurse or two. At the end of the interview, the patient thanked me for, take, for talking with him and stated that no healthcare professional had ever spent as much time with him as I had. He was able to open up more than he had thought he would because of the undivided attention that I was able to give him. I had thought that I didn't have much to offer this patient. I wasn't the one that could officially diagnose him, refer him to a psychologist, or prescribe him any medications. But just for a moment, I was able to use the power I had as a medical student to make his navigation through the daunting healthcare system just a bit easier. Advice that I have frequently gotten throughout medical school is to not become too attached to my patients and separate my work life from my personal life. My advice to you is to do the opposite. Yes, learn how to maintain boundaries with your patients when necessary, but become invested in their success. Laugh with them, cry with them. Recognize the systemic injustices many of them are facing and use your power as a future physician to work to correct them. Although most of our responsibilities as future physicians will be directly related to the medical care of our patients, at time it will be to lend a listening ear or to advocate for their rights through vital movements such as Black Lives Matter. Your compassion and desire for health equity are some of your strongest tools as future physicians. Remember to use them. It has been a privilege to be the president of Gold Humanism this past year. You're all entering a wonderful organization because of your compassion and leadership. Although it is easy to feel small as a medical student in a large healthcare team, remember the privilege it is to be part of someone's care and use the power that has been bestowed on you to better the lives of your patients and those around you. You have all already made such a difference 
and being inducted into this honor society is a small recognition of all you have done. Thank you for everything. And I'm truly honored to call you all colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery. Next, we want to just take a moment to acknowledge our incoming student leaders um, who were recently elected by their peers. Our leaders for this coming year will be Danielle Gibson serving as president, Emmanuela Joseph serving as secretary, Paulina Bamgonza serving as treasurer, Larissa Fomomugri serving as our events director, and Andrew Jang serving as our communications director. We welcome all of you to the leadership team and uh, look forward to what you have to offer. It's gonna be fun. I'm pretty fun to work with. We'll have a good time. Um, so the next thing I would like to do is just take a moment to um, invite all of the Golden Humanism members who are in attendance to share their cameras for a minute so that the students can see all of you. That includes the alumni and the faculty who are inductees as well as the new students who are inductees. Um, and if you just wanna, if everybody can go to the top right, go into gallery view, then you can see everyone, which is a little bit more fun than just seeing me talking. Um, so let's wait for a second. Normally we would all stand up, you know, during the event and we would do something different, but today we're gonna wave. So everybody wave. Good job. And um, thanks, that was great. And then um, several of the faculty and alumni um, did wanna share just a few words with you. So um, we're gonna invite them to do that. First, we have Dr. Brady, um, who's gonna share um, some brief reflections with us now. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Phillips, for this opportunity. Um, congratulations to each of you on being recognized by your peers as someone who embodies the virtues of compassion and empathy and as someone whom your peers would entrust with the care of themselves and their loved ones. That recognition is both literal and symbolic. In actuality, we won't often have personal knowledge of those caring for us or for our loved ones, nor will we often have extensive personal knowledge of those for whom we care. Earlier this spring, I lost someone very close to me. I had no say in, care, in who cared for them or even in the hospital in which they received their care. And probably what was most challenging as a healthcare provider, I was not able to be there to oversee their care. The one comfort I drew was that those providing care did so with the compassion and empathy that others have now formally recognized in each of you. I have no idea whether any of them were Gold Humanism members, and frankly, that's probably of little consequence, for when called upon, they provided what we needed, care that was focused, respectful, and sensitive to our distress. Induction into the Gold Humanism Honor Society carries with it not only recognition, but responsibility. In my faith tradition, each one of you might be called a mensch, a person who can be relied on to act with honor and integrity, this theater's term also suggests someone who is kind and considerate. That said, no one can be compassionate and empathic 24 seven. We will not always be our best selves. Being compassionate and empathic requires self-care, intention, energy, and constant recommitment. So tonight I invite you to share in the challenge, to regard the pin you will receive tonight albeit virtually, and will wear with pride as a daily reminder to assume the best of others, even when they don't show it, and to strive for the best from yourself, especially during those times when it may not come naturally or spontaneously. And congratulations again to each of you. Thank you, Dr. Brady. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Wanda Lipscomb to speak with us. Dr. Lipscomb, would you like to share your reflections? So good evening. I chose a background today that would bring us all together. As we think about looking up to the heavens and seeing a beautiful evening sky, 
It is what connects us that defines us. You each have been selected because of the connection that you have with others. Not because you raised your hand and jumped up and down and said, pick me, but because every day you just walk through your natural life caring for others. Caring for others is a fundamentally important part of being a physician. And you were selected to be here at the College of Human Medicine in part because of all of the activities that you had participated in prior to matriculation. But it's with great respect to see the collective work that you have done since your matriculation. Thinking about the impact that every part of your education has had not only on yourself as an individual, but how it has impacted your colleagues. And so there's that common theme that connects each of you to one another. You have always been committed to making the day look brighter for others around you. Some of you through the way in which you gave back to the community, others of you in the way that you spoke for your classmates. Many of you come from backgrounds where you're standing on the shoulders of kings and queens who always gave back to community. You learned that growing up, but more importantly, you never let go of it once you became a medical student. So I am very, very proud and honored to be a member of the Go Humanism Society, but I'm exceptionally excited to applaud our newest uh, inductees. You join a group of individuals who have distinguished themselves by just doing good. I encourage you to think of ways in the year to come that you can help in the college as we connect with others. We are, after all, living in the same universe. When we step back, we're all human. We all care about things. We all have dreams. And the wonderful, wonderful ways that you will serve your patients of the future is going to be just astounding. So tonight, reflect on why medicine. Remind yourself what motivated you to start this journey from the beginning. And then begin to dream again, set new goals, and set forth your future as you are going to enter into medicine as a wonderful physician. Thank you to our wonderful graduates who are here to share with you. And we thank all of you for remaining connected to one another in this family that we call the College of Human Medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lipscomb. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Andrea Wendling to speak to the inductees. Dr. Wendling. Congratulations to the students and to my friends who were inducted tonight. Um, this is my favorite society at Michigan State for several reasons. You, you can't run, you can't campaign, you can't even study hard to get inducted. And what this means is that you have truly been recognized in a good way as a human being, which is incredible and perhaps the most incredible and meaningful type of honor one can receive. And tonight gives us the opportunity to recognize that you are our team builders. You are the students and the faculty who make our communities better. So, Congratulations and thank you for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do to make this world a better place for all. Thank you, Dr. Wendling. Uh, finally, 
Um, last but not least, I would like to announce Dr. Erin Sousa. Dr. Sousa is the Interim Dean for the College of Human Medicine and the Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the College of Human Medicine. And he is going to give us our closing remarks tonight. There are a couple housekeeping things to do after Dr. Sousa speaks, so don't leave, but um, he's gonna conclude the formal part of our program. Dr. Sousa. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Um, I wanna thank you for all you uh, do to uh, make this this work and and um, this is a formal occasion um, and and so I want to acknowledge that Michigan State occupies the ancestral and traditional and contemporary lands of the Ananishabeg, the Three Fires Confederacy of the Ojibwa, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi people. In particular, the university resi resides on land ceded in the 1819 Treaty of Saginaw. I want to acknowledge the real ways that the state of Michigan, Michigan State University, and the residents of this land, including me, have benefited from the forced and systematic removal of the Ananishabeg and other indigenous people from Michigan, particularly during the Indian removal period of the 19th century. And I also want to acknowledge the trauma and difficulty and um, racism and oppression that so many um, have suffered for so long, some of which is manifest to some people only now, but has been there for 400 or more years. I wanna, um, and I, I think it's particularly important to do that today because the Gold Humanism Society recognizes the behaviors the attitudes, the skills, the perseverance that we as a society need to take these challenges on. And the empathy, Dr. Paganini, the limbic amygdala-based brilliance of, of empathy. I wanna thank you all for the work that you've done. I wanna congratulate you all on the recognition that you've received from your peers and and what a special and wonderful kind of recognition that is. And I wanna thank you for being a part of the college, recognize what this means and, and the incredible path that you're on and demonstrated that you can do this kind of work. And it is the kind of work we desperately need in the profession, but more importantly, in society. So thank you for doing that. And I wanna thank the wonderful people who make this possible. I wanna thank the faculty who support you and work with you, the staff who make this work. And in particular today, I wanna to thank the people who've made this event happen, including Julie Phillips, Melissa Kekos, Joy Scott, Amy Fowler, Tamara Dillingham, and Dr. Wanda Lipscomb. Um, I wanna thank all of you who have joined us today. Um, I wanna thank all of you who are a part of the College of Human Medicine. I hope you have a great day. The weather is cooler, which means that some of us are going to have a better night than we did last night. So thank you all so much. And stay around for the housekeeping stuff that's so important. Thank you, Dr. Sousa. We really appreciate you being with us this evening.